Now hear this. The church age could easily be described also as the age of the Holy Spirit. Without his work, none of the miraculous could ever have been accomplished. It is through his presence, power, and direction Christians are empowered to do good. The Old Testament, now let's talk about him in the Old Testament. The Old Te Te Testament describes God the Father at the foreground of the divine, formative, and creative work. The Father worked through the Holy Spirit, who used the prophets, the priests, and the kings of Israel to accomplish his will. He would come upon people for a season, for a time, to empower them to do specific things. However, the Old Testament prophets spoke about the coming of Jesus Christ, the Messiah, more than 300 times. At his coming, the Lord Jesus Christ himself <coughs> became the central figure through which God spoke and accomplished his will. Yet the Holy Spirit was quietly working in the background. Right, praise God. Since the day of Pentecost. Now, the day of Pentecost is not the founding of the church. The church began with John in the wilderness bringing the disciples together. It was the first small group. The Gospels are where you're going to learn how to build a church. The, Acts is, the book of Acts is also where you're going to learn to build a church. The day of Pentecost is when the power, power of the Holy Spirit came forth to empower those believers. God the Father, God the Son, had chosen to work through the Holy Spirit. This is not me attempting to redefine the Trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit are one, yet three distinct persons. It is at this point we have to see that God has chosen the Holy Spirit in, to be in the forefront of his work on earth. We desire to draw close to God. We do so through the person of the Holy Spirit. If we are growing our understanding of who and how and where the Holy Spirit works, we will then develop a fellowship or a koinonia with him. In order to better understand the who we have the desire of this relationship, we must know something about him. Without this, we're never going to learn about the supernatural world. This is critical to our development as human beings, as believers in Christ. Jesus is in heaven, sitting on the throne beside the Father. It's the Holy Spirit who's on earth. When you pray, you're praying to the man in the room. He's with you if you're a believer in Christ everywhere you go. So let's look at his distinct characters. First of all, this is something we're all guilty of. It says this in Ephesians 4, 30-32. Do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden him. By whom you were sealed, marked, and branded as God's own, and secured for the day of redemption, of the final deliverance through Christ from the evil and the consequences of sin. Let all the bitterness and indignation and wrath this passion, rage, and bad temper, this resentment, this anger and animosity, the quarreling, the brawling, the clamor, the contention, the slander, the evil speaking, blasphemous language be banished from you. With all malice, become useful and helpful, kind to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving-hearted, forgiving one another, ready to be free as God the Christ has forgiven you. That is our calling. We are to become what the Holy Spirit has desired for us to be. Now, there's three levels of this relationship. Two of them I'm going to... I'm going to mention all three today, but one I'm going to really get into next week. Number one, the Holy Spirit is with us. You need to understand that. He is with us. Some of the writers that I've read on this subject refer in a metaphor to the Holy, comparing the Holy Spirit to a wind. And I love that. It's a beautiful picture of really what he is because, you know, the wind is something that is felt but not seen. Wind can either be powerful or gentle. The wind also ex is experienced everywhere in the world at the same time. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is at work in accord with God's desires everywhere in the world by spending the Holy by sending the Holy Spirit, Jesus could break the limitations of having to be in one place at one time. Now, I, I really, this really hit me when I was really thinking about this. When Jesus was on earth, he could only do what he could do in the midst of whoever he was in the midst. The big crowd, the small crowd, the twelve, whatever, that is where the presence of God was doing what God was doing. There were limitations. Even though he knew everything, he was all of God, he couldn't be everywhere because of the physical limitations of the bodily presence of Christ on earth. 
But when he sent the Comforter, when he sent the Holy Spirit, he broke that bond. Where all of a sudden, the, Jesus was able, the Word of God was able to disciple everybody at any point in time, everywhere. That is one of the critical issues that we have to see about why the Holy Spirit is with us. Because God wants to reach everyone with the gospel, not just the few that are centered around him. And John 16, 8 through 11 says this, And when he comes, he will convict and convince the world and bring demonstration to it about sin and about righteousness, uprightness of heart and right standing with God, and about judgment, about sin, because they do not believe in me, trust in or rely on or adhere to me, about righteousness, the uprightness of heart and the right standing with God, because I go my, because I go to my Father and, and you will see me no longer, about judgment, because of the ruler, the evil genius, this prince of this world, Satan, is judged and condemned and sentenced already and is passed among him. He's with us because he's here to convict hearts. As you pray for your, your lost friends, your family members that you care deeply about, it is the Holy Spirit that is going to touch their hearts and their minds. There are times when I pray, when I'm sitting in the back, or even when I hear, I say, oh, Holy Spirit, move in and out of the aisles, touch hearts, feel free to convict them in, do whatever you desire. May your will be done, may your kingdom come. He is here to do that stuff. That's what he's called to do to the lost world. To be a demonstration. I know when I cried out to God as a young man, and I said, prove yourself. God sent the Holy Spirit into my life to convict my heart. He moved on every single person. I moved within my circle of influence to move and influence me. Listen. There are many writers but one author. When God the Holy Spirit gets involved in your life, he will use everybody and anybody he can to get your attention, but it's still one person speaking. When that person on Tuesday morning would give me a track about which church saves, and I read it, had my little orange, my, uh, my little orange juice and donut stuck it in my back pocket, my 11.30 appointment came around, and when somebody started talking to me about Ephesians, about which church saves, guess what? They didn't know each other. The only coincidence was the fact that they were both on my delivery sheet that day. But it was one author, one person speaking into my life, the Holy Spirit. God sends the Holy Spirit, has sent the Holy Spirit, excuse me, into the world to convict men. 